production tooling decision and really we developed a six point checklist and I want to go over that with you just to do a quick review so that we um, reinforce what we've what we've learned in our previous classes so six points number one customer acceptance before you cut tools you need to check with the customer you need to know is the customer going to buy your product? Do they understand your product? Do they value your product? Is it important to them? Does it address a key need? Do they understand the features? Have you got the features right that the customer wants? Before you cut tools, does the customer want the product? Number two, usage. Do you understand how the customer is going to use and possibly abuse your product? What are the customer's expectations? What are your expectations for the product in the marketplace? How is this product going to work? Are you sure that you've done the testing to prove that the product's going to survive and going to meet and exceed the expectations of the customer before you cut the tools? Number three, we talk a lot about volume, risk, and opportunity. It, particularly when it's a new product and a new market and a new customer, it's very hard to estimate where, where the market's going to be. But you need to, you need to put a significant effort into planning that and developing alternatives to handle what if the market really takes off and there's a high volume opportunity? What if the market doesn't and are we going to be stuck with uh, with high volume production tools and a low volume uh, production runs, um, you really you really need to take a quick look, a, a serious look at what your volume risk and opportunities are, and plan accordingly. If it's a well established product, a well established market, you've got a pretty good idea where the volume is going to be, plus or minus five percent. You know, then it's a, then it's a very easy task. And we talked about providing parts for product testing. You're the design engineer. You need to provide those parts, and you want your parts on product testing. But you don't want to tool up for product testing. Now, again, if it's a low-risk part, if it's a part that's similar to what you're currently producing, if you understand the market, you understand the marketplace, you understand the part and how the part's going to react, then there's probably very little risk, and it's a great idea to reduce your time to market to tool up early and use those early prototype tools to support product testing. However, if you don't understand the market, if it's a new market, if it's a new part, a significantly new part or a new function, then find alternatives, whether it's CNCing plastic or CNCing a metal part or, 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 or even a wood part. Um, you know, find a way to produce prototype parts, low volume, one-off, hand-tooled parts to support product, te product testing so that you can be sure that your product really will meet the requirements of the customer. And they don't have to be pretty parts. They're not going to be pretty parts. They shouldn't be pretty parts. They need to be functional parts. You, it's really a functional test and you want to make sure that your part meets all the functional requirements before you do your product tooling. So don't tool to test find better ways of providing parts for testing. And before you tool, how's the part going to be assembled? How's it going to be transported to the assembly line? How's it going to make it into assembly? Who's going to put it together? How are they going to put it together? What are the access points? What are the attachment points? What are the fasteners that need to be attached? Are they accessible? What are the tools that, they, that are required in assembly to attach the part? Is it functional? Can, can people really get tools into those places and attach those parts? Can it, can it be built? So before you tool, before you spend money on a mold, you know, are you sure that your part can be assembled for the customer? And we also want to talk, that was 5A, we put in a 5B, which was designing for shipping and packing. Because you don't want to ship a lot of waste. You don't want to ship a lot of air. You don't want to send containers that are half empty. So you really want to figure out you know, what's the size of the part that's optimal for, for shipping? How do I get the most number of pieces into the, uh, into the container? Or the appropriate number of pieces into the container? Okay. 
And then finally, number six, we talked about benchmarking competitive solutions. And, you know, this, this includes the whole gambit of value engineering and value analysis and looking at your current parts, looking at your competitors' current parts, you know, how are they made, what are the, what are the features and the values on the, on the components, uh, how, do I, how do I deliver the most bang for the buck, is this really, truly a smart product, have we designed it well, have we designed it for low cost? Have we designed it efficiently? Will it, will it provide all of the functionality that the customer wants at the appropriate cost level? So again, reviewing. We talked about number one, customer acceptance. Number two, customer usage. Number three, the volume, risk, and opportunity. Number four, providing parts for product testing. Number five, verifying assembly and shipping solutions. And number six, benchmarking and seeking out lower cost alternatives. So that's, that's what we talked about two weeks ago when we talked about production tooling. Are there any questions that, uh, that anyone has? Anything that came to you that, uh, afterwards?